All right, everybody ready, seated, ready to go? Okay, let's do this. Oh, okay. Oh, let's get, let's get NL uh, North Carolina back on. You guys have a bed or North Carolina oh, now, right? <laughs> They're awesome. It's um, they call it the tin can by the side of the road. Is what they call it. So it's literally like a tin can building in North Carolina, and it's right across the street from the blue line, which is like your house. And um, it's really fun. <laughs> North Carolina, they call it the tin can by the side of the road. It's an amazing community, amazing space and center if you're ever that way. They have a shower there too, in case you ever want to sleep. That's true. I, I've slept in the summer and showered in the summer. Don't ask me, but I did. <laughs> so, okay. Are we good there? We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. And we're back. Hi again, North Carolina. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. I hope you guys had a great break. Uh, welcome back from the break. I want to jump right back into it. Guys, let's, just, let's bring the talking to close. Thank you. Um, we're going to get right back into it. So uh, to piggyback off what Chris Austin said earlier about, you know, what is and what isn't a small group leader, we're going to have a little fun today. You guys like having some fun? Woo! So we're going to get into uh, a little, you know, Q&A here. So psychological assessment is something that we do not do as coaches. Wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> who thinks they know? Wrong. Everybody, shh. I'm talking right now. So who, <laughs> who thinks they know what psychological assessment is? John Solomon, let's hear it. I think I know. It's a question. All right, so um, to me, it would be... Seeing, for example, if someone did an action and I'm trying to coach them, but I'm actually like, why'd you do that? And in a sense, making them feel bad and wrong, like stupid and wrong for doing so, instead of, um, not instead of, but basically, that's what I think. Okay, yeah, it's a good example. Uh, okay, I, I see assessment and I think judgment for trying to explain what's wrong with somebody. Gotcha. Yeah, it's all good examples. Uh, we're actually gonna we're actually gonna pass this out for you right now. This is also a page in your ML notebook, so you you should already have this. But you know what? We're so generous. We give it out. We're gonna give it out to you guys. So if you can take one and pass it down, that'd be great. I always say it was told to me by my mentor, now girlfriend and mentor. Um, first money hats in my life. Um, she once said to me that that page in your ML notebook is worth a million dollars, and I didn't get it in the beginning. Wow, it's like worth a billion dollars. Um, this this paper, if you really take time to yeah. look at it, um, and really review it, it's not only as small group leaders, but in your life, like it's really like it's your relationships with people. Nobody wants to to be psychologically assessed in relation to you. Probably So we don't psychologically assess our small groups. We inspire committed action. Yay! Yay! Smiley face goes right there. So if you read this, the psychological assessment, a lot of you gave amazing examples, right? Up here it has a few like what's wrong with me or what's wrong with them. Um, like you want to, here's the thing, she also spoke into rigor. Rigor is this commitment to excellence, and it starts here in your thoughts. Rigor translates out, but it really starts in your thinking. You've got to be rigorous with your thinking and your thoughts as a small group leader. And you want to be careful and notice when you're actually, you want to catch yourself if you notice yourself going into psychological assessment versus committed action, which is why we're bringing it up, and it's, and I feel like it's a really important aspect of being a small group leader, when you really get this and have a firm grasp in this. So that's why we're taking the time to go over it a little bit right now. So, you know, you want to be rigorous with your thoughts, and notice if you go there, like, uh, what's wrong with, with that person, or if you get judgmental, as one of you guys said that over the years, um, you know, uh, it, 
circumstances, uh, successful on that if you're in survival. Um, no really distinction between fact interpretation. If you read, there's just a few examples here. But, you know, we're trying to stay away from that. So what I really want to focus on right now is committed action. This is the way to be effective as a small group leader versus ineffective as a small group leader. So who wants to stand up and uh, read from committed action? Okay? Yeah, if you can please say your name and, and just read down the line. Um, my name is Sally. Committed action. How do I make a difference or contribute? Are my actions consistent with my commitment? What is my commitment? Acknowledge broken agreement, invert, invent, or create. I am the author. I am responsible. I honor my words as myself. Promises, commitments dictate action. Distinction between fact and interpretation. What would love do? Communicating from yes and possibility. Creating the unprecedented future. Making bold, outrageous, unreasonable promises. Taking action based on vision, stand, possibilities, and surrender. Thank you, everybody. Let's give Sally a round. <laughs> so who wants to stand up and share what you heard, what stood out for you, and maybe if you have any examples of either who, what your small group leader was for you in regards to committed action or what they inspired you to do from the committed action side. Anybody want to take a stab at it? Last one. Okay. So on, on out of all these, name? yeah, my name is Jay Cunningham. Um, the one that really stuck, stood out for me is, I hope, I wish, I want. And uh, what is my commitment? That's what he kept going into. He says, well, you want this, but what is your commitment? Um, I, I hope I can do this, but well, what is your commitment to this? Like he was constantly doing that, and my part one uh, small group leader. So he kept coaching me into my commitment, 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 and it stuck with me, and I went into part two. Um, I wasn't actually going to go into part two. I, I was committed to it, and then I, I pulled myself back, and then he put me back into it through my commitments. What you're speaking into is very powerful. Let's give Jay a round of applause. What you're speaking into is a very powerful aspect, right? We, we're really showing them what it looks like to be commitment-driven as opposed, as opposed to letting your feelings or circumstances or outside situations, you know, whatever life is throwing at us, dictate where we go. We're just that, you're just that effect of life, and that's no way to, to live a life that you say you want. If you're going after your 10 life, that dream life, being an effect of life and all its circumstances that it throws at you, that's not, the, that's not an effective way to get there. So really taking a look at what commitment driven, what being a commitment driven life, or leading a commitment driven life, I should say, what that looks like. It could, that alone, if you master that, can radically transform the quality of the rest of your life. So thank you for sharing that, Jay. Anybody else have any of that stood out for you, okay? Uh, number nine, I just, what would love do? Yeah, what would love do? Um, speaking for myself, as being a small group leader, I think that's just a beautiful come from because there's no judgment. It's complete compassion, empathy, love. I just see that as being the most beautiful way to coach. So that's why it's for that. And what are you, that's actually pointing to something. What exactly is that pointing to? How is that even a beautiful way to coach for you? Because it's so easy to come from judgment or even assessment. So really taking that step back and getting out of your head and in your heart, I think is a very um, effective way. To there's, there's two contexts we can come from as small group leaders. We can come from love or fear. There's really no in between. If you really stop to take a look at it, you can come in the survival context of fear. <coughs> what's in it for me? Or you know, wanting to look good, be right, be comfortable, complacent, whatever it is for you. Or you can constantly say to yourself, "What would love do?" And that's what visionaries. 
That's what people that are committed to creating the 2% wake up each day, and we should be asking themselves. What would love do? Am I going to flip in that person off in traffic? Or what would love do? Go ahead. Go on in. So it's a constant reminder to come from the context of love. You know, that you have the power to choose. You know, that's a huge distinction in transformation, that you have the choice in any moment to get out of that yucky psychological assessment and step into committed action because you say so as a leader, and the whole purpose, too, is to make a difference in somebody's day by simply coming from love. So it's a really powerful, you know, place to come from. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, Gia. I don't know if we give Gia a hand. spend our life doing that when we're really trying to go in that direction. How effective can we be? Wouldn't it be so much better to, okay, we know where that was, and go in this direction. So reacting in the past, I think that's really key. Because then you can know what you can do. <laughs> when you say reacting from the past, that's key. What exactly do you mean? I'm not sure I follow you. Letting all your successes go to your head about how wonderful it was, or all of your failures of how terrible it was, and you're stuck in that, and you try to define your present with respect to whatever happened. Who does? As one does, I do, yes. As opposed to looking for what we have true commitment to, and when I have true commitment, there is no stopping me. So you're, what I hear you saying is, instead of, you know, living out of your past, really looking forward to the future, uh, and being commitment driven. Making the present, being the author of what's happening right now, instead of being reacting to what happened. I see, okay. Does everybody follow? Everybody understands? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you, Miles. Yes. Thank you. First thing, strong taking action based on vision. the beginning, like my first small group leader, it was always like that. Like I always had to say what, where I should be, what I should do, and that's always based, for me, it was based on evidence, like it says there on the other side, but it was also based on like judgments and creating unprecedented future means like anything is possible and setting outside my box and, and declaring something without thinking if that's what I should be doing or not, but making bold declarations, and that's changed. spoke into something powerful there too and you know we we're really part one teaches uh, the distinction of creation uh, change versus create or change to create so I really actually want to speak into that because I heard you talk about create you're creating your future whatever it looks like it's the unprecedented maybe even the impossible you're making it your reality just because you say so you declare it into existence and that declaration word, you have something to press up against, and it wouldn't happen without you having an intention and a declaration, putting it out there into existence, and working whoever you need to become up to get to get to that point. So it's 
powerful that you shared that. And that's what we're supporting our small groups with doing. When you're on your coaching calls with your small groups, you're really supporting them with this. Like this paper alone can radically transform their lives. Not only your lives, but their lives based on the, the effectiveness of your coaching that you can deliver. Who you could be for them just by this piece of paper. If you really master this, like she was saying earlier, this piece of paper alone is worth a million bucks. I, I used to actually have it on the coaching call. Like, if it have it support me when I was doing like 15, 20 minute coaching calls, I would either have it um, on my phone, uh, when I finally got a smartphone. Yes, I did on my flip phone. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's true. Facebook didn't exist in ML1. Just saying. Um, <laughs> it wasn't around. But it's a real good tool to keep in your car, to keep on your phone, to like download it to your pictures, keep it on your, your screensaver. Um, when you're on your coaching calls. Because here's the thing, if you guys actually took this information and didn't just use it in a workshop tonight, and you really implement it into your life every day, even at your jobs, those of you that like, you know, are supervisors, own businesses, work with other people, if you start to be in relationship with people, coming from a place of committed action instead of psychological assessment, watch your relationships. Watch what happens to your relationships. And that's what you're doing as small group leaders. Your, their biggest cheerleader. You guys are like the magic makers. For them. Like you're like your little Harry Potter. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like that's what you guys, you guys are being and um, doing for them. So if, are, are you complete with that? Or yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So it's a really awesome tool. It's in your ML notebook. Don't forget about it. Now you have a new one. Yes. Sure. One more, and then we're gonna move on. Um. So for me, Alicia. Um. My favorite is number 14, it's stand possibilities and surrender, and it always ties back for me of like the be, do, have, because um, a lot of this happens simultaneous for me, like I, you know, standing and showing up and, you know, being compassionate and knowing what I'm committed to every single day and, you know, standing for other people's commitments and, you know, standing for what I want as a trainer, as a small group leader and whatnot, and then, you know, showing up to, um, different services, showing up to work on time, you know, recreating all of my relationships with the things that have held me back in the past and allowing myself to see what's possible and allowing my um, my plate to so easily expand now. Um, and then also surrender is like the having of what I have and, you know, it is what it is until it isn't, you know, and that's been something that's been super powerful for me because then it's a constant reminder that it's not... I have to have all these things, you know, and then I get to be this person, and then I'm, you know, doing these things. It's like I get to do this every day, and as I'm stepping into new possibilities, as I'm stepping into new chapters in my life, then I also get to to be open to what's possible and to be that for other people simultaneously. So it's been very cool to, like, to watch it as an observer as well as someone that's participating and then standing for other people to have that happen too. So this is super important for me. That's why it's part four, baby. <laughs> okay, awesome. If you want to put those down, maybe on your seat uh, next to you, and what we're going to do is we're going to take a moment here, and what I'm going to have you do in a second is I'm going to have you turn to the person or people, however it may work in here, that you're sitting next to, and I'd love for you to take about two minutes to share with the person next to you what's opening up for you so far tonight in this workshop. Like, what's opening up for you? What's something that you think that you are going to take out of here this evening? Something that you learned? Something that's new? We're going to take about <coughs> two minutes, and then we will come back and do something else. Okay, so why don't you turn to the person next to you, and go ahead. I'm going to 
I have to also look at these. start to think about that person and the qualities, the qualities that attracted you to them or didn't attract you to them, but they probably ended up being the biggest stamp for you in your life. And if not, how come? Because we say that we're the ones that bring the value. So perhaps you were one of those Love to hear, you know, from a couple of you of who was your 
your small group leader. What qualities, ways of being stand out to you about them? And what are the gifts and what's the result that you have in your life because of them being in your small group? Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, Sean Russell. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Again, ever have Sean or Trey? He was, wow. I was in Janelle's part one group with Sean Russell, and I didn't experience any of this compassion or love that she had. <laughs> I, I, I experienced rigor, and it's just like this no bullshit, we're not going to talk about that. It was just, that's the circumstance, and what's your vision? And like that was his, and, and he literally drilled that into me, and I was like, really, that's all I'm getting is these three fucking words? Like, like, what, kind of coach, what kind of coach is this? And I learned so much from that man, and, uh, and it, it actually, once, once it all finally sunk in and, 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 and came through and I processed it, and I was like, oh wow, okay, that makes sense. That was my, um, that was really what, what made me be like, oh, I, I want to be a coach, I can do this. And now being, um, being a small group leader for the part two that just finished, um, I'm now on my calls, I had my five calls today with my five people that are all going to ML35, and it was a result of him teaching me how to ask powerful questions and let these people let, tell me their vision and just keep on asking the questions. So, your results, buddy. Thank you. If that's not a great, if that's not a great example of how powerful the butterfly effect can be and paying it forward, moving from uh, success to significance and really being the outward focus stand for others, I don't know what it is. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm Marsha, um, and I had Chris Victoria in my part one, uh, and it was interesting to me because my first coaching call with her, I was a minute late, and she said, you want to acknowledge your broken agreement, and I went into like complete righteousness because according, I wanted my phone to be like 11:30, not 11:31, but I knew it was 11:31. But I was un, I was un, I was not just unwilling to be wrong. <laughs> I was totally unwilling to be wrong. And now, what what that taught me was that how powerful my word is, and how righteous I can be, and how I set myself up to either win or, or learn. I don't want to say fail because it's win or learn um, by the words that I choose. And you know. And it says it on here about about being, you know, my, my word, and that was like a big thing because I, you know, was so stuck on the righteous and the and control and all that. And then she was a, a senior in my ML, so that that was kind of cool. And you said before, like I, I coached a part one that I'm senioring with someone that I was in my I was a small group leader, and now we're coaching together. And it's just so amazing to be in a, in that space together because I I watched them like break his heart wide open, and now we get to break our hearts wide open together. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Herman, uh, Neil Mack, most of you know, uh, I'm ML25, old ML35, 
25 uh, West Swamp. Uh, my putt one field was Bonnie. Uh, and my putt two small group field was uh, Ken. And for me, coming to the journey, and I'm so proud of you. Because so, I've had the opportunity to be with you. But I chose otherwise. But it's how powerful that your vision when you have people stand for you. As a small group leader, you are able to transform other people's lives. And when I went to my journey as a captain, I've done, uh, when I went to my journey on ML, my small group, uh, uh, Ken, was also on my small group. He was my first uh, uh, senior, and then I had Karen. And they both saw the biggest vision that I've seen in but I kept on, I kept on, I kept on. And I know so many faces here. And it's so great to see them again. I've been out for a year building a business because I have a purpose and a vision. And because of the training, I'm able to utilize that. And uh, so you are able to change people's lives. That's what I would love for you to share your vision. Your My vision, vision is to. Um, we stand for the next generation of youth and AE. I'm uh, work, now working with the deaf kids to teach them how to dream and how to uh, install their confidence, not because of poverty or dis uh, uh, disability, but more so of their willing. And right now, I'm building a business in the entrance industry, building a team in order for me to take as much time and be able to pay forward what I'm doing here and outside of the country. And those of you that don't know Herman, he uh, worked here for how many years? Say, uh, As operations and facilities. How long, yeah. have you how long did you work here? I, uh, I worked with the Gratitude for a year. Yeah. Uh, no, more than two. More than that. I think <laughs> two years. Two years. Yeah, so I started around. as a ops master. I did uh, six months working volunteer with no job because I love the company and I really learned so much from growing. But I, it was not about giving the free time. It was I was getting more than what they were paying me for. And that's the development that you can come without you seeing where you're going. And that's what we're doing. That's what this training is about. It's not being a small group leader to somebody else that you don't know. But you are a difference in somebody's life that you will meet and become a best friend, just like you just shared. And how many of us can do because there's so many people out there that needs somebody else's touch, somebody else's love, somebody else's words. That's what we do. And I appreciate it. Francie.
ML, I had Emily Greer, and then uh, Lee Borichow, and same thing, started off with like, you're gonna go to Nico, <laughs> and um, patience, compassion, and that love, and like seeing through the, the, the BS, and really being a stand for me, and then like with Lee, I had a huge breakdown one day at, a, at one of our events, and I ran out, and like crying by myself, and like here he comes, and like, here comes this like tall, beautiful, like, macho like man man right and here I'm crying like a little boy and he broke down and cried with me and the space the, the, the safety that that created for me of like this guy that I look up to that I'm like oh he doesn't like me because I'm not worthy of him I'm not man enough that kind of stuff and he broke down and cried about his stuff with me forever forever ripple and ironically today I had a call with one of my students from this party that I just did and she's like when I opened my eyes the, the, before we did the thing when I had my eyes closed she's like I hope I don't get Federico. I hope I don't get Federico. And I was like, <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> Let me guess. Let me guess. Take a wild guess. <laughs> and I was like, oh, was <laughs> you know, and, of, and of course now, you know, we're great and everything like that. But that, 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 that when you said it, like, the, the first thing I thought it was a lot. And it's funny that you're bringing it up now. Because I thought about that and I was like, oh, I remember that. Yeah, that's, 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 I'm like, I wonder how many other ones have done thought that and then not said it in any kind of not said anything. And just been like, hey, good night, kids. Not all this is love, this one is leader, right? <laughs> possibility for connection. The power of vulnerability is so strong. So thank you for bringing that up. That's an excellent point. We need to take one more yeah, share. Yeah, one more. John. No, no, no. Uh -huh. okay. John and Steven. Uh -huh. That's it. Because <laughs> we can talk for hours, I think, about yes. this. <laughs> well, I am John, ML13 for Ladder Duck. And uh, for me, they, like, all throughout my journey, there has been like, Amazing leaders that has been there for me. Um, for part one, so it was this lady by the name of Miriam. I got her last year. And how she's been a great stand and support for me was uh, at that moment in my life, like I had vision. And I always seen the future of what I wanted to do. And yet I never took a leap of faith. She ever took those risky steps to get there. And from part one, um, at that moment, like, I had just left my job like just later, months later. You could say I was on my final last end of my finances, but. Like, 
went ahead and went, that was my sketchy conversation. And she simply said, trust, show up. Whatever it, whatever it is, trust and show up. Whether you have the money, don't have the money, just trust and show up. And I did that. So I said, what if I found myself in part two? And um, it was amazing. And the growth I got just to go through that felt great. And I still look back and think, oh, you know, I never, I picked up the phone and talked to her. I never connected, but I'm grateful for her. And for part two, um, I had Ezgi. And, Ooh. and oh, yeah. <laughs> From her, um, what I learned and like, what really stuck to me was the fact that she was a, a powerful leader and she didn't have to say much. She was just there, just like patient and listening. And I could see her, like, I call it fire. I could see the fire in her eyes. She's like, she was intently focused and committed to the other person outwardly. I'm like, this is a powerful leader. And then um, whenever people in my life at that time see me and I was quiet and shy, they're like, John, you're shy, you're timid, you're like, this is cowardly. Not me, you don't know me. And then so after I, I learned that from her, I started embodying it. Like what if I look? People started telling me, John, you know, you're quiet, but yet there's something back there. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> so and throughout my head, there has been great leaders like Krishna and um, many other people told me, 16 seniors on my team. And um, somehow I really think that all of them were a puzzle piece affected an area of my life and to this day I look back and say I'm grateful for the people that were there for me and um, I realize even in the background from part one she literally built the whole journey for me through me and um, there's many people in the background I never got to see and um, because of that that's why I love silent service and thank you for listening. <laughs> Steven, I'm a 4 Fort Lauderdale. Um, my small group leader for part one was Richard Powell. <laughs> uh, powerful man. And this lovely lady right here was in my small group. See me come from like this shaky, timid person. Funny that piggyback off of John would said. But it's also funny, like, well, also what you said is that each one of the small group leaders were like a perfect puzzle piece that fit my life to got me to this point where I am today. Um, my part two was Stephanie Lostein, which is my grand emo, and then um, ML, Heather Horney, <laughs> which was definitely a stand for me to get out of my comfort zone. <laughs> Have my calls at 5.30 a.m., and now I work at 3.45 a.m. Go, go figure. Never more was a morning person, but awesome people. I can believe it. Yeah, every time I Yeah. And, and I have, we have a piece of that artwork in our dining room. Yeah. And so there's a piece of you in our home to this day that hangs in our dining room. And I always think about that, that that was the start of your journey. And you, and what was cool about that is you, correct me if I'm wrong, but you hadn't painted in years. And some of that was collections that you did that you just never got the work of what it was for. Yeah. So I look at you and I, and I always think that of you because you're, there's a little piece of you in our dining room. <laughs> I remember that day specifically because you asked, do you have anything else? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I have a whole collection in my car. So I ran down and got my portfolio. <laughs> and it was an original piece of artwork. <laughs>
it's an honor and to be in service and a privilege to be in service to another human being. We couldn't do it without you. Make sure you know that too. This community is based on volunteers, but it's never a scarcity of small group leaders. It's a, who do we get to have love these people in this training group this week? So when you see people saying, come and declare to be a small group leader, we have two captains over here for the upcoming part two. <laughs> and two for the upcoming part one. Oh. Actually three, David Thomas, where are you at? There you go. Yeah. So yes, girl. I say that because it's not to like reconnect it to you, that like, think about your lives. Think about the small group leaders. Think about where where you can bring another human being to the sacredness. If you haven't played in a while, why not? Check in. Come be in service. You know, that, that's what this is here to to re, re-inspire and re-spark whatever had you step away for a little bit. Come back, you know, and, and make a difference in somebody's life if your schedule allows you to do it, you know, and um, reach out. And what was up with you, right, Shannon? <laughs> Yeah, thank you um, for everybody for sharing. It's really inspirational, and you get to realize that you can be this person for tons of other people. And you know, you're gonna after the co- after the training is complete, you're gonna have your coaching calls with your people. We spoke into a little bit earlier, but um, on these calls, these are like 15 minute window phone calls. And if they go a little over 15 that might be fine but too much past that you might be actually you, you let be letting them run their story it, it could actually take away the effectiveness of powerful coaching so it, they're about 50 minute phone calls and you're you're working with them on getting them into the net whether it's part two or if you did a part two you're working with them and getting them into ml and you're working with them with uh, you're coaching their circumstances like what whether it's uh, bringing up money raising the money to get in uh, handling the taking the time off of work or whatever time circumstances are there you know it's about working with them and one of the things I want to mention Barry actually says this a lot and I think it's very valuable to add here there's nothing more irrelevant than what you think other people should want or think or even feel there's nothing more irrelevant than what you think other people should want think or What do you think I mean when I say that? Raise your hand and shout your name and and shout out. What do you think that means? What do you hear when I say that? Uh, Well, thank you. Uh, What I hear is what our assessment is of their vision and their dream. It doesn't matter. If we're we're standing as source for their vision and their dream, then it it doesn't matter what what they think is what matters. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Uh, we're all interpretation machines, and we don't want to be right about what somebody else is interpreting. We want to give them a chance to express that and get to the root of their own interpretation instead of assessing of what we think the interpretation is. Right, because as small group leaders, your commitment is to their commitment. Whatever they're committed to for taking action in their lives, a lot of it will be moving on to part one, uh, moving on to part two or ML. Your commitment is their commitment. And it's not your job or your place to make up what you think is right for them. They are the wisest people. I want you to really hear this right now. Really listen to this. They are the wisest people that they know. They're the wisest people they know. And your job is to be that support system, to be their biggest cheerleader, to be the no shit stand that you heard other people talk about where that were that person for them in this room. And you get to really hold them high and hold them accountable. Because like I said earlier, their circumstances are gonna come up, things are gonna wanna get in the way, you just keep doing the training with them. Keep bringing them back to what opened up for them why they're doing this in the first place, always inspire vision. You don't want to coach a specific circumstance. What you want to do is you want to coach their big why, their vision. (laughs) Because when they get lit up and inspired about where they're going and what 
they want to create and generate in their lives, the circumstances magically take care of themselves because the value is there. The value's there. Does everybody hear that? Does everybody see that? Okay, awesome. Is there anything you wanted to add to that? No. Awesome. All right. And, and, and you want them, you really want to get them excited about the training that they just signed up for. Think about it. Let's, let's take part two, for example. They, they say yes, they choose ML. They just went through all the things that they opened up for themselves in part one, all the things that they then took into part two to totally break through, all the things that hold them back, stop them, limit them, those limiting beliefs. Chances are that have been running them for many, many, many years. They break through these. They're at their highest point, like this is their highest self choosing the next training. So when they, that's when you get to hold them accountable to it. Remember that they said yes, this is what I mean by your commitment to their commitment. You're not gonna buy into their circumstances or stories because I bet they're gonna have them. You bet they're gonna have them. And your job is to see through that, sort through the gook and help them wipe off those filters. And, and bring them, remember why, why did you say yes in the first place? Like, why are you here? And how can we do this together? Let them know you're on their side, you're on their team, but you're not gonna sell out to them. You know, you're their coach, and you highlight those blind spots that they can't always see. That's the value and the power of effective coaching. You're their biggest cheerleader. You're their yes and let's take that action. Biggest cheerleader probably will ever have in their lives that are committed to them winning. It's really important to remember that as a small group leader. And remember, you have your coaching calls with your captain on the alternative days that you have your calls with your small group. So their captain calls are really there to, they're like a sounding board. They gather information from you to see how their tra the training's going and to look at the numbers. But it's also a, it's a, it's a, it's a coaching call for you. You get to run things by them. Uh, just like we're speaking to the power of coaching for the students, it's same, same for you. There's a lot of power in this coaching that you're gonna have with whoever your captain is. And it's, it's an amazing give and receive kind of a, kind of a uh, relationship, both with your captain and your small groups. So it's really an amazing opportunity and uh, that's why we say it, it's really an honor and a privilege. And um, in a way, it's also a, a responsibility. Because when you commit to this and you take this on and you're a yes, you have a responsibility to these people. And, and not to be like responsibility to like a burden or like pressure, more so responsibility like, wow, this is my vision, this is my stand, and this is providing me an excellent opportunity to practice that and live it in my life as source for whatever I want to see. Everybody heard that uh, phrase by Gandhi, be the change you want to see in the world, right? What a better way to do that than right here doing this. So, time to roll. <laughs> shared who their small group leaders were for them, the way they championed and cheerleaded them on, maybe it was the way that they took a stand for them, maybe you didn't like who they were for you, or is that really just because they challenged you in a way you've never been challenged before, in a way that was going to have you effectively take your life on in a way that you've never done it before. Think about who your small group leader was for you and how they supported you. 
even if you didn't like your small group leader, how did they still support you? What ways of being, now that you have reflected, what are the ways of being that you can now access and bring to the table? That you can now be for other people? And I want you to take a moment and reflect on who they were for you. When you're ready, you may open your eyes. And with that being said, I want to say that you guys have the ability to do that too. You have the opportunity to be that stand, that champion, that cheerleader, whoever that person was for you, you can be that for another person. And then some. So much more. Not only for their lives, help them see a vision or catch a dream and really go for it. But for you, being that stand for somebody else and taking on taking action for your own life as a result. Powerful. We have the whole group of goals to see. We have everything that it takes. And so do your friends and community that think that they don't have to be friends. But if there's one thing that hope Uh, would actually serve us 
to be the very best trainer that we can be. Um, you can put your name or not put your name. I don't care. I'm just open to the feedback uh, so that we can tweak this to, to serve the community and to serve us as trainers. So there are a box of pins over there in that table where you guys could uh, fill that out. I also just want to say really quickly, uh, Millie Huser. Who knows Millie Huser? Woo! All right. So a couple things. Millie is doing her workshop, okay? And um, she's our teammate. So I want to tell you about it, okay? <laughs> and I want to support her. She was a huge fan for us this evening. She's actually doing a hurricane recovery with her husband, Dan. That's what he does for a living, and she chose to go with him. And uh, she's been communicating with us there, and they've had like 10 hours of no running water. She's had to find bathrooms. It's bad. So her and her husband are being in service. They're doing water, taking care of people's homes and stuff. So she couldn't be here tonight, but I did want to share with you that her workshop is going to be on November 5th from 7 to 9. And again, it's the same thing for us. It's a requirement of the internship. She gets to have 30 people as well. And um, it would mean the world to Jaina, unfortunately. Um, I'm not able to be there that night. I have a, a prior commitment. So in my place, I would love for all of you um, to attend that workshop. Her workshop is called Living by Principles, and it's about um, recovery and transformation. It's a huge topic for our community. Yep. Yeah. It's a huge topic. In West Palm. And that's Monday. And it's going to be in West Palm. It's going to be at the, the West Palm Center. Whatever. <laughs> November 5th. <it's, laughs> and she's going to be posting it on the grad page, just like you saw our faces a lot in the last few days. <laughs> Hope you didn't get sick of it. And uh, <laughs> she, uh, but she's doing that. And then. Um, Alonzo, you guys know Alonzo Yabar? Yes. Yeah, all right, so Alonzo is a part of our team as well. He's going to actually be doing the personality matrix. That's what he's going to be doing for his workshop, and so he gets to have people too. So that's how we play team. You know, I say go and support them, and um, they'll be, uh, you know, oh, and the other thing is we're all graduating on November 7th. <laughs> Training.com and log in there. From there, you'll click on a tab called Grad Resources and you'll see how to declare through that. And if you have any other questions, reach out to uh, the next captain of any future training or the training coordinator up there, Haiti. She's an amazing human being. Amazing. Amazing. Or heaven. Or heaven. Or me. I'd love to support you too. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much for being here. All right. Yeah, and I also want to say, North Carolina. Don't worry, these are coming live to you as well in North Carolina because Haiti has asked to be the facilitator there of this workshop. So Jay and I worked it out with her and we're gonna we're gonna have her uh, facilitate these workshops for you guys too. So you guys are next, it's coming your way. I love you guys, thank you for joining. Everybody say goodbye to North Carolina. Oh!